the freshwater stream we found led to a large swamp. We baited up our cray pot and left it in for a few hours, hoping to catch some freshwater cray. I believe these fellows are called red paw, but I'm not sure. And I've got quite a few of them, but I think they're a little bit too small to eat. The amount of food I get out of that is a waste of time. So I might use them for bait. Whoa. If you own one of those half boats with only one hull, or anything that draws over a metre, you're not going to go far in the Gulf. Most of the creeks and rivers are a maze of sandbars and require surveying in a dinghy first. Once you have your depth, you can find the channel or the deepest way in. Generally, if it's not high tide, you won't get in anyway. But once you're in, you're guaranteed a few things. If you enjoy fishing, you won't be disappointed. And if you're lucky enough, you may even score a few mud crabs. Yay, I got dinner. It's a boy. The creeks and rivers above Weeper were easiest to access, but below Weeper the water became more shallow, especially in those large areas of unsurveyed water. We met the cat's whiskers in Weeper and travelled with Richard and Bryony all the way down to Corumba and across to Swears Island. Not another yacht was seen by either of us. You don't have to take pictures of me, especially when I'm Don't drinking. break the camera shots. <laughs> um, okay, as soon as the camera's on, I know, it's... I know, I know. <laughs> she did very well yesterday. Channel yeah. like mad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the island is Aboriginal freehold, but the lodge is located on an old town site which reverted to Crown land. The island is rich in bird life and has a wealth of history, having been visited by a number of the early explorers. Swears Island caters exclusively for fishermen, and over the last three years only a handful of yachts have been to the island the thing they've got for us, or the thing that we find most precious, is fresh water. Well, that fisherman pulled up an anchor yesterday, and this was clamped onto the end of the anchor. And it is, yes, it is a gold lip. Is there a pearl? Sorry, no pearl, but it is a gold lip. I had no idea they were here. Yeah. How, long, how many years have you been here? Fifteen years. Wow. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. The wind picks up in the morning and it's blowing about 15 knots, even 20 knots in the morning. And amazing enough, the wind calms out to nothing in the afternoon. Tex told us to visit one of their favourite spots in the area, Bountiful Island. Coming ashore early one morning, we approached a green turtle digging to lay some eggs.
Although we tried not to disturb her, she went back into the water without laying. Determined to see a turtle laying, we returned the next morning to witness a flatback turtle coming ashore. The flatback turtle and the green turtle are vulnerable species and Bountiful Island provides an untouched beach for nesting. There's no threat of wild pigs out here, unlike the west coast of Cape York where every turtle nest we came across was dug up by pigs. Conditions can't be right. This turtle also returned to the water without laying. Our introduction to Mornington Island could have been a bad one as we nearly ran aground. Uncharted reef blocked the entrance to Appel Channel, the most suitable anchorage between Denham Island and Mornington Island. The locals were friendly and everyone you passed wanted to know who you were and where you were from. I introduced myself to a fellow called Frank Watt, who I spotted spearfishing in the shallow water. Barramundi, you don't know, Samba, uh -huh. and Levan, uh, leatherfish. Group here. Hold the spinner with your two finger, and the other three fingers holding the umra. And lift it up with the same paper of fish and just throw it. Once we run out of money, we have to go and do this awful thing called work. It only lasts for about three or four weeks. Is it smoke out yet? Yeah, I'm starving. The township on Mornington Island is called Ganuna. It has basic services, including a small supermarket and a post office. <laughs> Weekends and Mick was keen to go crabbing. A short dinghy ride from where we were anchored is Dugong Creek. You see all these dark spots in the water? A lot of them are old poles. I'm just looking for those dark spots to start moving. When they move, there are crabs. I've had more trouble getting food out of a supermarket sometimes. That's how easy it is to get a feed on Mornington Island. I've got a boy. Give me some look at you. Yep, it's a boy. You're my special treat for the night. Okay? 